name's Rick Fenninger. Um, I have to say, I really don't enjoy doing these things. I don't like talking about myself. Uh, so I'll try to make this, you know, fairly short and informative, hopefully. Um, first question is, um, what's your digital audio workstation? Mine happens to be Digital Performer. Not a lot of people use Digital Performer, mostly for film scoring. And one of the main reasons is I grew up using Performer and morphed into Digital Performer, so I can get around it really quickly. Plus my orchestral template, which is over 1,500 tracks right now, is in Digital Performer. You know, I'd like to migrate it over to some other platforms, but that's what I use. I also use Logic Pro X. Um, I teach at university, so I have to you know, teach that to my students. And I use it for some projects, mostly jazz stuff that I do. I also use Cubase and Pro Tools. Uh, some clients want things delivered in Pro Tools, so I, you know, um, learn Pro Tools. Um, how did I get into being a multimedia composer? Uh, this goes back to the days right after I graduated from college. I went on the road for five years as a touring musician, playing in a lot of groups all over the country, and actually all over the world. And one of my favorite things to do in the afternoons when we had downtime was go in and see a movie matinee. And I just love being in a dark theater by myself or with a couple other people in the afternoons. Um, not a lot of people went to movies in the afternoons back in, in those days. And, uh, and I just knew the minute I started listening to soundtracks, watching movies, seeing how the soundtracks interact with the, with the you know, characters and everything, that that's what I, I wanted to do. And later, video games. Um, because when I started playing video games, it was Super Mario Brother, you know, 8-bit. Nah, you know, I'm like, oh, the soundtracks are, are not so great, didn't enjoy it. But now, wow, that's, you know, that also interests me. Okay, um, five favorite composers. Wow, it's so hard to narrow that down to five. Um, I'd have to say James Horner, for sure. Um, he died, unfortunately, on my birthday, June 22nd. Um, John Powell, love Everything John Powell does, um, everything. Uh, Thomas Newman, uh, love his stuff too. Mark Isham, just because of jazz, uh, trumpet player. And Jeff Beal is also one of my favorite composers. Jeff and I were at Eastman around the same time, although I never knew him. I think I was a senior and he was just coming in as a freshman, but even then he made an impact. Why do I like him? Just because of the diversity of, of these guys and the fact that, you know, they can do a lot of different things. Um, and I also like the jazz influence of Isham and Powell. Um, favorite movies and soundtracks. Uh, again, five, that's tough too. Um, I love Shawshank Redemption uh, by Thomas Newman. Uh, I love the movie, love the score, the way the score works. Video games, I like Journey and Abzul by Austin Wintory. I hope I'm saying your name correctly, Austin. Um, really cool approach to those video games um, and just love the way that he um, scored those. Uh, in fact, I could just sit and listen to the soundtrack as much as play the video game. And one of my favorite movies is Searching for Bobby Fischer, which probably not a lot of people know. Um, that's another, that's a James Horner score. But um, just love the vibe of all that. And I tend to, I think I tend to gravitate gravitate towards more of those um, you know movies with deep character development and uh, just just you know fleshing out the characters and the changes in the in the picture and everything I uh, love it okay um, my workflow uh, how do I write and produce music <laughs> that's a good question too um, I am an early morning riser 3 a.m. Uh, this came from when my children were smaller and um, I used to practice a lot, still practice, still gig, although not lately with the COVID thing. Um, so I found that I could get a lot of uninterrupted practicing and composing time in um, in the mornings. And my kids grew up through it, so they would sleep through saxophones, you know, saxophone practicing in the morning at, at 3 a.m. Um, I still do that, uh, which is strange because when I was on the road, I used to, you know, get home at 4 a.m. and, you know, sleep until 1 or 2 or 3 in the afternoon. So I've totally flipped my, my life around. Um, I'm still a pencil and paper kind of guy. So I will actually write out a score on pencil and paper. You know, one there, you know. Um, and I have John Williams in back of me looking over my shoulder, so that's kind of daunting, right? You can see the cardboard cut out. Um, I'm still pencil and paper. I sketch out a score. Um, I will then orchestrate it and input it into um, Digital Performer most times. Um, and then from there, um, just present people with you know options and make edits because as you 
know, everyone knows in the uh, multimedia business, you know, especially with digital media now, everything changes until up till the last minute, so you have to be ready to make, to make edits. Um, so that's, that's pretty much my workflow. Um, I also teach at a university, so, uh, you know, my classes usually start around nine and are over with by one, which is nice, so then I come in the afternoons and do some more work too. Uh, what makes me unique as an artist and how do I define my sound? That's interesting too. Uh, I'm really in, heavily influenced. I've done, you know, obviously I studied jazz. I have a, a DMA in, in jazz studies, a master's in woodwinds, and a um, bachelor's in music education. Uh, I actually taught public school for three years. Um, and I draw on all those influences, especially as a jazz artist. And I'm also really interested in classical. Um, you know, John Powell made a great statement. He said, listen to anything but film music, you know, listen to classical composers. In fact, I just got the John Powell study score for um, How to Train Your Dragon. So I'm going through that, which is fascinating. Uh, also electronic music. I love sound design. I love coming up with my own sounds. Um, I, and I love combining all those elements. So I guess that would be, you know, it's kind of like a melting pot of, you know, jazz, classical, and, you know, uh, electric, electronic music. That's pretty much how I, I would define find my sound. And I listen to a ton of stuff. I, I, I'm a runner, so whenever I'm running, I'm listen, either listening to a soundtrack or you know, a video game or something to, to uh, pique my interest and inspire me. All right, um, my approach to scoring to picture for the layman. <laughs> That's, I'm a layman, right? Um, the big thing for me is communication. You, you have to open up a dialogue with the person you're working with or the team that you're working with and really discuss what is the overall vision. And that can change as the project goes on. Uh, that's why you wanna constantly be able to have an open dialogue and, and talk about, you know, get at what um, everybody's working towards the same thing. You know, and for, for a composer, it's hard because you tend to describe things in musical terms, which some people aren't musicians. So you need to really, I don't wanna say dumb it down, but you need to put it in terms that, you know, it's kind of like if someone were talking to me about brain surgery and they were a brain surgeon, you know, I probably wouldn't understand some of the concepts, but we need to come to some common ground. Um, so communication's key and collaboration, you know, it's everybody should be working together to make the final product better, whether it's a video game or a film or a commercial, anything like that. My funny story is I did a McDonald's commercial several years ago and there were five people from the ad agency in the room and, and uh, it, was a, it was a harp track and strings and, and one of the guys said, yeah, I really like you know, even more percussion than you have. You, know, you really gotta bring out the percussion tracks. And I'm like thinking to myself, well, there's no percussion on this thing, you know? And so then he got up and left the room and four guys literally leaned at the same time and said, just ignore everything that guy says. And I was like, ah, oh. so I, you know, again, collaboration, communication, and dialogue. Dialogue about, you know, how to make this project better, what you need, what you need for me, and, and be open to change. That's the, the big thing for me. Um, my process, describe my process for composing from brief to delivery. Um, again, for me, it's lots of sketches. I like to present people with a lot of ideas. Um, where they can, you know, communicate back to me, well, you know, I didn't like this, I didn't like this, I didn't really like this instrument, but I kind of liked where it was going, get rid of the trumpet, you know, whatever. Um, you know, maybe not a great example, but again, dialogue, lots of dialogue. What do you want? How, how can I deliver this to you? You know, how can we get on the same page? And you also, as a composer, need to be fluid. You need to change directions quickly. You need to, you know, um, not be married to your work. You know, if somebody says, oh, I hate every one of these, then you need to say, okay, wow, let's figure out, you know, what I can do to, to get you get you to like it. You know? um, and, and, you know, in the world of digital, you know, everything is changing all the time quickly and you have to be able to, to you know, be fluid and make those decisions. And the bottom line is what can serve the project the best? And that's what you need to come up with so that, you know, everybody's happy and we feel like we've put out the best product that we possibly could put out. All right, the process uh, and concept between my artist album. Um, I'm, I'm a pretty optimistic guy. And uh, this whole COVID thing has, has sort of gotten to me. I've been teaching remotely, um, haven't had face to face with my students. You know, teaching jazz saxophone lessons uh, remotely is not a whole lot of fun. 
So this album for me, you know, came up during the whole COVID thing. I mean, Nocturnal Horror, you know, I, I don't feel like I was living it that badly, but I was definitely in a, in a dark place and still sort of am, you know, because we're still in the throes of all this. And I know, you know, that this will pass. My grandmother always told me nothing ever lasts forever, you know, so, th so that's how I feel. So that was kind of my approach to this was sort of hitting on my dark side, which I don't very often. I mean, I don't enjoy doing horror movies. I've certainly done some. Um, but that, that, this whole album sort of hinted at just how I was feeling through this whole process and just what our world is going through, what we're all going through. And this is the dark side of it. You know, um, now I'm working on a project that's, that's sort of the 180 from that, which is nice. So um, that's, that's my concept behind this. And it is dark. <laughs> Probably one of, the, one of the more darker things that I've put together, aside from some horror movies that I've done. Um, how do I manage my time on multiple projects uh, with my family? Uh, family time is really important to me. Um, I'm fortunate that my children are launched and out in the real world and doing well, um, but I always worked around their schedules. Um, I'm really disciplined when it comes to schedules. In fact, I'm so anal that I put together a schedule saying at 10 o'clock on Monday, I should be doing this, you know, because that's how I have to map out my life to get through projects. I actually have a whiteboard in my studio um, that has the project on it when it's due and I know how many tracks I need or what I have to get through for a certain project and I come down and that's the first thing I look at every day. Um, sometimes I love that whiteboard, sometimes I love the whiteboard when it's filling up, right now it is filling up, hate it when I go um, finish a project and erase the whole thing and have to start all over again. But life is a composer, right? Um, Saturday afternoons and Sundays are sacred to our family, uh, that's family time. You know, and, and I get it, you will run into a crisis every once in a while and you have to say, oh, I have to, I have to fix this. I mean, there was four or five years ago, I was doing a video game that all you know what broke loose and um, wound up having to uh, cancel a vacation to finish the video game um, because I felt like I owed it to those people to, to see it through because it all came down to a hard drive crashing, somebody not losing backup files, it was, it was a mess, but we, we fixed it. So, and my wife was very understanding about that, which is great. Um, lessons learned that I could tell other composers. Same thing I tell my students. Uh, in, uh, we have a music technology program here at the university. Um, take care of yourself. You know, you're, you are going to be, you know, if you're not feeling good, if you're tired, if you're stressed, you're not going to be able to create. You know, exercise. I'm a runner. Um, I run every day. And that, wow, that is my cleansing, you know, and I run listening to soundtracks, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, eat well, you know. I, I don't drink, I don't do drugs. I'm not saying that I'm, you know, the perfect person by any stretch of the imagination, but you need to take care of this because this is what's, what's going to, you know, propel you along, you know. Uh, my grandmother's 101, still very vivacious, and I'm hoping I have that gene because I'd like to work for at least 30, you know, 40 more years, right? Um, and so that would be my advice to, to, that I tell my students all the time, you know, get enough sleep, take care of yourself, you know, meditate, you know, even 10 minutes a day will help you center what you're doing. Um, anything else that I would like to share? Just the fact that I love doing this. I love working with creative people. I love dialoguing with creative people. I like taking a project and making it way better than it ever would have been if I just did it by myself. And um, and it just brings such joy to my life that, I, you know, I, there's not a morning that I don't get up and I'm like, wow, you know, I, I can't wait to get up and do what I, what I like to do. And I think that's why I, I wake up so early because I'm like, yeah, I, there's so many things I want to do today. I got to cram it all in. So uh, thanks for listening. Uh, hope this helped. And, um, you know, maybe we could work together.
Thank you.